All right, everybody, and welcome back to Quest for Glory 1. So you want to be a hero. Well, we are kind of a hero in a small way, you might say. We just freed the baronet. We got some money. We're actually not broke anymore. We're, we're rich bitches. But we're still going to do our daily work. You know, got to get that constitutional in every day. Build up your vitality and your strength. So I'm going to start this episode out with a real winner. And uh, we're going to do yard work. Isn't that exciting? I think it's exciting. Then again, uh, I have really poor taste. So what do I know? So yeah, I've actually uh, planned out a little bit in advance. So hopefully things will go smoothly from, from now on out. Indeed, indeed. The stats we have at the end of this game will import into the next game. And I gotta say, so far I'm really behind on the whole uh, stat line thing. Yeah, see our stats are okay, but they could be a hell of a lot better. Hell of a lot better. But we'll do what we can. And we won't care about the rest. We're just like Blue Bail. Oh, my man's here. So this uh, Serial Pharrell kind of dude, he shows up every once in a while. And he's mostly here for the fighter. He'll teach you how to fight and not suck at it. Fortunately, I know how to spam the attack button. If you are addressing me, sir, you must respect me enough to address me to my face. He likes you to approach. He won't talk to you unless you're close by. Now, I really don't need to talk to this guy all that much. We already got a point for talking to him. And as a wizard, that's all you need to do from this guy. But we'll ask him a little bit. I am the weapon master, expert swordsman, and trainer. Tell me about sword. The sword is the finest of all weapons, and requires an equal measure of skill and strength. What about friendship? Please don't bore me, young adventurer. Ask me about something more interesting. Well, anyway, let's move on with our lives. So, actually, I didn't play this game until some years later. The first game I played when I was like six or seven years old was Quest for Glory 4, and I didn't get this game until much later. Back when abandonware sites and stuff started popping up. So I didn't play it till quite a while later. So it's not something I have as much nostalgia for as some of the other games in the series. But I feel like it's good to kind of get the whole picture. So we got some fairy dust last session. And we need that to uh, make that uh, dispel potion that the dryad told us about. So let's hop on and uh, give her the fairy dust here. So, you say this is one of the ingredients for the Dispel Potion. Well, I'd better get started making it. I think we've given her everything else. We need some flowers from Marana's Peace. Thank you. I can always use flowers from Marana's Peace for potion making. Here are your few silvers. The Dispel Potion will take a while to make, so why don't you come back later? We will do that. We're going to go. We got some stuff to do today. Let's go ahead and rest up a little bit past the time you can't rest infinitely in this game which makes passing the time a bit of a pain in the ass now i promised you guys some stuff we were going to get shit faced i promised you that last session uh, i like to keep my promises except when i don't so we're gonna go and uh nah fuck your healthy food fuck it fuck it right in the ass we're gonna go and we're gonna get some uh some boozums My good man, I happen to, uh, I happen to have come by quite a large amount of money in the last five minutes, so I would like to have your finest, your finest breath. If you want a mug of dragon's breath, the house will say you have to be cash up front. You cough up the cash. Thanks, buddy. Hey, Crusher, our friend here wants the dragon's breath. Come on, buddy. I used to drink Admiral Nelson's. I think I can handle this shit. There you go. You've never tasted anything like it before. It's delicious. Oh, wow. Talk about a fiery brew. Maybe you really shouldn't have tried the dragon's breath. Better luck next time, and we hope you saved your game. As a matter of fact, I did, good sir, because I am privy to your games. Mm-hmm, I know all your tricks. 
Oh, you bullshit, you're tossing my way. Well, since we have some money, let's go ahead and spend it all doing dumb shit. And by dumb shit, I mean we're going to buy some rations. We haven't done that yet in the entire game, so we might as well buy a little bit of food. And yeah, we could have bought a flask from him, but I'm lazy. And I didn't want to walk all the way back here, and I didn't remember that he sold them. Mostly that last part. But uh, anyway, so we saw this letter last session to uh, meet somebody out by the archery range. And uh, good adventurers are snoopy people. You know, spying on people in the showers, looking at their dicks, taking notes. So let's head over here by the archery range and... Fa! He's not there yet. We have to kill some time. Because, you see, these games actually, on a serious note, without me doing my goofy-ass voices, these games were kind of revolutionary in that they had the day-night cycle and were some of the first games to do it. Not the first. I think uh, Ultima might have had the first day-night cycles in gaming. I could be wrong about that. But these games had it as well. And were the first adventure games to do so, I believe. So what's this about, anyway? Her nibs is starting to get suspicious about us. Eh, what's the bee in her bonnet? Seems the hero wandering around here has a leery. She thinks she's going to go for the gold on her head. What's that doc to do with us? She's been asking us too many questions about us. What? She's been asking too many questions about us. And the laughing jackass is eyeing me, too. I had to sneak out. Then we got to avoid the ambush and use the back for a bit, till the heat is off. Maybe we should just make our move now. Nah, let's wait for the creep to go first. While she's busy with him, we take over. She'll take him out easily, and then we take her out. What's the back door? Where's the back door, then? Where the bouncer hops around, wink, wink. Got your key still? Yeah. Don't lose it. I got the only other one. You'll have to search the rock for the keyhole. It's hidden good. And remember the word. Uh, what word? The word that lets you in so that Fred goes away. Uh, oh, yeah, sure. What was that word again? It's, uh, hide and go seek. You think I'm a dummy or something? Say the word right before you go in the door. You might make Fred mad. You don't want Fred to get mad. Hey, uh, no problem. Uh, what was that word again? I wasn't paying attention. Hide and go seek. Uh, hide and go seek, got it. I gotta get back before the chief misses me. I'll be back in a bit. Here, yeah, hide and go seek. Uh, I'll see ya. Hi, Bruno. How's it going? All right, well, we need that guy's key. You see a hard-looking character who appears to be a thief. He must be one of the brigands. Well, we don't, uh, we don't allow no brigandry in my town. Your flame dart streaks towards the startled brigand. Yeah, I'm a hero. I'm a hero, yo. All right, let's walk around and loot the body. You gotta get that key, you know. We can't just be killing him and not taking the key. That was the whole point. Oh, hi, Bruno. You stabbed my pecs. Timing is everything. Done in by poison daggers and desperate desperados. Try to avoid annoying that deadly duo next time. Well, that clearly won't work. We have to waste a little bit more time before we go, uh go around there. So let's take the long way around. The okay, so he's here, right? He's here. You see him. If you actually go back, he'll still be there. I know. Because I did it. I saw this earlier. He teleports. He's magical. He's a magic man. He's got magic hands, man. Alright, so enough wasting your time. Enough wasting your time. We're going to hop around. We're going to go around the town the long way, which is uh, not too bad, really. Just a little bit out of the way. And it's good to avoid daggers in the pecs. They tend to be painful and cause excessive nipple bleeding. And we don't want that. I know I don't like when my nipples bleed. What, you don't have bleeding nipples? 
I think you're the weirdo. Anyway, we're taking the long scenic route around the town here. We'll get there eventually, I swear it. God damn it. So close and yet so far. Alright, seems Bruno's moved on and won't be stabbing our pecs this time around. Let's loot that body. You find a single key on the brigand's body, and put it away. Well, we are now one key richer. And that's pretty spiffy. Let's, uh, kill some more time. Because, you know, the days are too short and the nights are too long. Actually, it's kind of the other way around. So we've been hearing about this supposed Baba Yaga character and how she placed the curse on the Baron in the first place. Now, we need to go find this, uh, this ogress and show her who's the real arch wizard in town, is what I'm thinking. And I happen to know where she, uh, where she's at. She's up here. Looking around, you get the feeling this is not a very friendly place to be. Hey, Baba Yaga doesn't welcome strangers. You have to deal with me before you can enter. Baba Yaga is one tough magic user, and if you're so stupid that you want to enter, perhaps we can make a deal. I'm one badass dude. The large skull on the gate seems to stare vacantly at you, because he has no eyes. These are the biggest chicken legs you've ever seen. All right, okay. Look, why don't I just open you? Can I even do that? I'm gonna try that. Can I even open this with the open spell? This spell has no effect because you're a right shit wizard you are. Well, tell me about Baba Yaga. I wanna know her before I show her who's boss. Baba Yaga's the most powerful ogress around. If you got any brains, you'll stay away from her. Tell me about this ogress. You're some hero if you don't even know what an ogre is. I know what an ogre is. It's like Shrek. She's like a female Shrek. Tell me about the hut. Baba Yaga's hut will squat if you say the rhyme. I don't know if I want to squat. That sounds dirty. What about the rhyme, though? The hut will squat if you say, Hutter Brown, now sit down. Handy. So, uh, you talked about making a deal. All the other skulls have glowing eyes, but me? Nah. I don't need lovely glowing eyes. Just open the and close the gate. That's all I'm here for. If you can give me a glowing gem for my eyes, I'll let you in the gate. Yeah, we'll agree to it. All I ask is a little gem or jewel that glows in the dark. You're the big hero, so go find one. Yeah. Well, as it turns out, my friends, we already got one from our little questionable deal we made with the frost giant. No, I don't want to drop it. No, I would shit myself. Yeah. Bonehead, take the take the gem there. You place the glowing gem inside the skull. I can see. I have eyes again. Yeah. Is that what you look like? Oh, well. You have fun visiting Baba Yaga, and good luck. You'll need it. Hope you can remember the rhyme, because I ain't talking to you anymore. Go fuck yourself. Fortunately, I, I do recall the rhyme. Alright. You hear a voice in your head asking, What is the rhyme? You tell the hut, There once was an alien from Venus, whose body was shaped like a penis. Nothing happens. How about... Hut of Brown, now sit down. And there you go. See, that's how you do some rhyming stuff. You don't talk about no alien penises. You just get on right with your business. That's how you do it. Charming place. Look, pets, we have a visitor. Power of night and shadows of day. Heed my words, henceforth you stay. Your body is frozen by the power of the witch's spell. Well, dearies, what shall we have for supper today? Hero sandwiches. 
Or I had something more formal in mind. Ah, that's it. Frog leg fricassee. How does that spell go? Hear me, O oh powers of comfort and manner. Turn my now my guest into a species called Rana. I learned that spell from Erasmus, kids. Doesn't it look delicious? Damn you, Erasmus! Why didn't you teach me this spell? Be still! Critics, we can't all be gourmets. Blibbidibbi, I suppose. Oh, soon to be supper. I don't suppose you have a name. In fact, I do. You try your best to croak out your name, or at least let the witch know that you indeed have one. And you make a feeble croaking sound and try to nod your head. So, you're the one who's been trying to be a hero around here. The only good hero is a dead hero, I always say. But I do have need for a brave fool. Are you brave? No. Yes. You make a little froggy sound, trying your best to indicate your agreement. Well, if you're willing to do a small little teensy favor for me, I might reconsider having you for supper. I need the root of a mandrake plant that grows in the graveyard. Will you be a sweetheart and fetch some for me? Do I have a choice, really? Of course. I'm a fine farmer of mandrake. Anything but frog leg fricassee, you think? You croak your agreement to the task. And I had my mouth watering for frog. Oh well. Hear what I say and hear me right. Mandrake must be pulled at precisely midnight. This I tell you and this I say. Return with the root ere the break of next day. Hear what I say. And no, I don't lie. Bring back the root, or else you will die. Charming fellow you are. You. Shoo. And here I thought I was going to go be a badass wizard. I killed a kobold. From a distance you hear the witch in tone. Oops, I nearly forgot. Hear me, O oh powers of mana and more. Turn this fool back as he was before. As you contemplate the occurrences of the last few minutes, you conclude that you'd better find a mandrake root for Baba Yaga, and fast. Well, that could prove a problem. Well, we've been to the graveyard before at night, and it was crawling with uh, undead spirits that killed my ass. Didn't even fight them, they just killed me. Not even friendly-like, don't even dance with you. They're not gentlemen-like, you know, they just do what they want to do and leave. Well, we clearly need some some kind of magical potion because I'm not a good enough spellcaster to just cast magic the old-fashioned way we need a magical potion here's the potion of dispel while that is a fine potion it's not exactly what I had in mind so let's buy the uh, undead potion here hope this will help you I hope it will too my dear I hope it will too this is the undead ungent there's so many things I can't pronounce worth a shit. Maybe I'm just really stupid. I don't know. Books. Those are for smart people. Hi, Bruno. How's it going? I missed you. You didn't stab my nipples this time. That's nice of you. I don't like having my nipples stabbed. So this guy... Um, you really, really can't do anything because he's like a badass. If you even look at him, he'll just knife you right in the butthole and you're dead. Unfortunately, there's no way to quickly rest in this game. So uh, I need to kill some time until it's midnight because we have to go at midnight to harvest the plant. If you try to harvest it early, you're fucked. Because this is a Sierra game, and that's how they treat you. Like shit. Now, if you try to harvest it early, I'll go run over there right quick. If you try to harvest it early... Save. You wrench the mandrake plant free from the tombstone on which it has grown. Somehow you thought this would be harder. You wonder if you did this right. 
The root shrivels and twists in your hands until nothing is left. Astonished, you look at your empty hands. Sounds like my sex life. Anyways, if you do that, it won't regrow. And you're fucked. Because Baba Yaga is not a very patient person and she doesn't like to wait. But now, uh, to get back to what I was talking about earlier, since we're killing time now, and who knows how much of my monologuing I'll end up cutting out of this video. Maybe all of it. Maybe all of it indeed. I'm going to see if I can level up my throwing. Yeah, because I, I want to pick up some small rocks and throw them. Yeah. So back in the day, uh, I don't remember exactly how I got Quest for Glory 4. It probably came with the first PC I ever had, which was a, a compact Passaria, which I actually found some videos on YouTube of the intro for the Compact Passaria. They had like this... Compact had their own little thing. It was a Windows 95 PC, but it had its own little shell when you started up the computer that had like... Of course, you get to the Windows desktop, obviously, and you had uh, like this kid's book shit you could play with, which I did when I was a kid. You could make like dogs make fart sounds and stuff like that. You know, child humor. You know, stuff I would still probably find funny because I'm like a giant child. Um, anyway, I ended up with a disc of the, uh, fourth game, somehow, which turned out to be one of the fa my favorite games I've ever played, and probably, as, you know, strange as this sounds, one of the biggest influences on my interests and my life, which is strange to think about. But I was a kid, you know, I grew up in rural fucking middle of nowhere land, you know? And uh, this game, of course, was an adventure game, a uh, point-and-click adventure game, but it was a fantasy game. It's set in a medieval fantasy setting, but it has elements of Cthulhu. It has role-playing game elements in it. And to me, it's just been, like, as silly as it is, indescribably, like, a really big part of my life and, like, my interests. And I've always loved that game. Now... The other games in the series, I, I played later, because as I, I don't know if I said this in this video yet or not, it's hard to understand now, especially if you're a little bit, you know, younger, that uh, there was a time when you couldn't just, you know, buy any game off GOG or find anything anywhere online, you know, there wasn't always an eBay. There wasn't always an Amazon or things like that, you know. There were times where things just couldn't be found. And it ended up like that all, um, for me with the Quest for Glory games. There wasn't anyone who sold them. After the Quest for Glory collection, you couldn't buy them in the store. Um, the Quest for Glory 4 disc got fucked up. And it was years before I heard the voice acting in that game again. That's actually what got me into doing YouTube, and again, I, I tie everything back to this game in a weird way, like, but that's what made me start putting videos on YouTube, was wanting to basically do a long play of that game for other people who might not have access to their discs anymore, who just wanted to hear the voice acting again. Of course, it's not really relevant that much today, because there is GOG, and there are all these abandonware sites where you can get games, legally and otherwise. Um... To, to play with that you wouldn't be able to get otherwise and it is finally the middle of the night I don't know if any of that rant will actually survive to the final video but we will see we will see indeed let's rub this oil all over my dick you feel a tingling sensation as you rub the all over your body it's an oil it's an undead oil it's a salve like Vicks but for undead it appears the spirits frolic here during the dark hours you can't fuck with me now. I'm invincible. Let's just get what we came for. You rinse the mandrake plant free from the tombstone on which it has grown. You hear a scream like that of a dying child as you yank the root from the ground. It's a little morbid of you. Anywho, we have a mandrake root. We're really moving up in the world. On to big hero business right now. Go ahead and uh, take this to old Baba Yaga, because I know she's going to be impatient for us to get back. 
So, you made it back, did you? She's expecting ya. She's gonna have me for dessert. And it's gonna suck lips. And these nuts. I don't know. Now I'm back to this ranting about stupid shit. Dick jokes, that's what you people are used to. What's the rhyme? But a brown. And now, sit down. Let's go ahead and save this in a different slot, just in case I fucked something up somehow. You never know. The world may never know. Back so soon. Spirits of the mist and creatures of the bog transform my guest to the shape of a frog. But we had a deal. This I vow. Stay there now. Once again, you're a frog, and once again, you can't move. This is very exasperating. Mmm, yum, yum, froggy frappe. Did you bring me the mandrake like you promised? You make a feeble croaking sound and try to nod your head. Well, where is it? In my ass. What do you think it is? What's the matter? Got a frog in your throat? I suppose I'll have to turn you back into whatever it is that you were. Pity you're much more appetizing this way. Creatures of the bog and spirits of the fog, return the true form to this rather dumb frog. Now, did you put it in your backpack? Ah, here it is, right next to the dildos. Kids, we have it! That's it, the final ingredient. Now we can make our greatest creation, Mandrake Moose. I love moose, not Mandrake Moose, that's gross. What's that, children? You think we should reward our lackey here? Very well, ex-frog. I'll let you live this time. Next time, though, it's frog legs for sure. So, go. What an awful bitch. Turn me into a frog, you say to yourself. Someday, I'll return the favor. Erasmus! Well, I think we'd best just not mess with her anymore right now. Let's have ourselves a little nap. Little therapeutic nap up in Erana's rest. To kind of Build strength and strong bones and trombones in my dick bones. I don't know. I don't know. Don't even listen to me. Why do you people listen to me? What are you getting out of this? Some infinite wisdom? I can't even comprehend. I don't know. I sleep amongst the flagrant flowers until morning and the dew's on my head. All right. Well, we're getting very near to the end of our little adventure here in Spielberg. But first, I have some work to do. And I'm going to do it. And I'm not going to make you watch, though. That would be boring. So I'm going to fast forward this little bit. All right, lads. We're about ready to begin the final leg of our adventure. Now, Bruno and his charming companion there mentioned that uh, there was a rear entrance <laughs> into the brigand's lair near where that bouncing thing was. A bouncer. Get it? Because he bounces and he defends stuff. This thing. Well, by golly, it's an antwerp. Antwerps are on the endangered species list. They're so rarely seen. So we have to do the only honorable thing and murder the shit out of it. It's okay, buddy. I'm prepared for you this time. I'm a bona fide wizard. I quickly loosen up to fight. I'm a wizard who doesn't use spells, okay? I know it's kind of weird. Okay. But we're, I'm ready. Whenever you're ready, Antwerp, I'm ready for you. Confident and loose, you approach the Antwerp. Oh yeah, you take it. Take it! 
get rid of the ice. Holy mackerel. Well, the last time he fell on my head, but we're going to be a little bit more prepared this time. Yeah, how do you like that? There's little antwerps everywhere. You seem to have caused an antwerp population explosion. That sounds killing me. I'm getting the hell out of here. All right. Well, this rock does look a bit out of place. The rocks were left here by the receding glacier. Okay, maybe there is no description in the game to help you figure this out if you don't know it. Well, good thing I know things. You say, hide and go seek. Or was that hide and go seek? You hear the sound of someone or something moving deeper into the cave to let you pass. Now, because I am a powerful wizard, I don't even need a key. Your spell has unlocked the lock on the rock, but it is not yet powerful enough to open the rock door. Well, we clearly need to just keep on clicking it until we can force our way through it with our man muscles. Oh, we're actually pretty, pretty weak, actually. And crappy vitality and crappy intelligence and all that shit. Well, this is a cave. Look, there's some... God damn it! You know what? You know what? Fuck, you don't want fucking me to read goddamn text and put it up on the screen all of a sudden. Pause the video. Grumble, grumble. Stupid guard duty. Third time this week. Why always me? Grumble, grumble, grumble. This must have been the Minotaur they were. Uh, I've been out here too long. My imagination is taking over. You know, I know how this character talks, and he does not talk that eloquently. Good ears, but very poor peripheral vision. And this must be the Minotaur we were told about. Well, I'm in the mind that he just needs to calm the fuck down. Suddenly, a feeling of peace and tranquility permeates the area. So I was trying to just click on the door earlier, and uh, that does not work, and I wanted to kill people. But if you just walk over here, with the walk icon, he doesn't wake up. You hear a snick as the hasp on the gate is open. Good day, sir. This seems to be a bandit fortress. Well, sally forth! <laughs> that, that expression. Hey, you guys are late to the party. Ah, the old rug over the pit trick. A small sign reads, booby trap. The brigands approach to see the booby they've caught. You think to yourself, it looks like a trap, and it feels like a trap. Maybe it is a trap. Okay, well fine, we won't, we won't walk over the obvious trap, and we'll instead, we'll walk around it. And we'll come over here. You get this little tripwire thing here on the ground, you can kind of see it. There's a dark rope stretched tautly across the path. Now that you know it's there, you can easily avoid it by stepping over it. And we'll do just that. Ha! I'm no booby for your traps. Fuck your door. You close and bar the door. Yes. Quite. So what do we have in here? We have a little smiley face chair. Wooden tables, benches, and chairs fill the space of this brigand meeting area. A chandelier lights the room, and an unlit candelabra stands in the corner. A rope hangs from the chandelier. Yeah. I outsmarted all of you. What are you going to do about it? I'm a powerful wizard. Do you got any loot? Well, damn. I guess there's no loot. What does this say? Oh, this is brigands... something out. Oh! Huh. Hey, we can talk about this. You're half right, but completely dead. There are still too many brigands for you to fight in here. You need to find some way to block one of the doors. Well, we'll handle that. How we just slide this here chair right over in front of it. Yeah? What you gonna do about that, huh? 
I think I broke it. <laughs> One peak is worth two finesses. Mm, maybe letting the brigand see you block the door with the chair wasn't a good idea. So as you can tell, th the game wants you to do this in a very specific kind of way. Uh, and this whole area is pretty much that kind of stuff. I remember this area the first time I played through the game just really kind of pissed me off because it's a, really kind of annoying to have to deal with. Oh look, the Three Stooges! We, you've seen it before. I've seen a little bit of it before. I was too slow. And you get to see this death message that these guys look familiar. Okay, hopelessly surrounded. We should have stopped those brigands somehow. Maybe you'll see the light. It's making puns about its hints, man. That's what it does. Alright, no more screw ups. We're doing we're doing a for serious run this time. Yeah. Let's show them three stooges who's the real stooge. Alright, so what you gotta do, you have to wait till they get close enough, but not too close, as I did. Because it gets to touch you, and you die from it. Oh, a wise guy, eh? So I wait for them to start to come around, we hop up on the table here, and we do the old chandelier swing trick, and it falls on their head. Yeah, no special message for that. Let's get the hell out of here, I'm tired of this place. You bar the door behind you. You behold a most fascinating place. A person labeled me speaks. Abandon nope, or abandon mope all ye who enter. Job hunting or just sightseeing. I foresee a brilliant future for you in the fall. If you got something to say, then speak fast or forever hold your pieces. State your case before I case your estate. <laughs> So, this must be the infamous Yorick we've heard about. <sighs> Are you Yorick? You know me, eh? Then perhaps you have come to help. Perhaps you're able to take a child from the band. Alas, poor Yorick, I know me well. Ten years ago, I swore I would find Elsa no matter what. It took me two years to find her, here with the brigands, and I've posed as her warlock ever since. I couldn't break the spell on her, nor could I leave her to grow up and not uh, yeah, grow up into an attractive woman surrounded by rogues and scoundrels. Someone had to defend her honor. That's noble, I guess. Tell me about Elsa. You know Elsa? Then perhaps you've come to help. Perhaps you're able to take the child from the band. After you've explained what you know about Elsa, York speaks. It's about time that someone else helped Elsa before it's too late. Toro and I are the only friends she's got here. She's a lot like her dad, though. She's organized these brigands and changed them from mere thugs to major raiders. She plans to move the entire band away from the valley as soon as the snow clears. If that happens, I know she'll never be disenchanted. Well, that's sad. I protect the brigand leader with everything I've got. All two inches. There's no laughing matter as I get matter. Maze, tell me about this thing you've built around here. This room is my way of keeping the brigands from bothering the leader about races, since it tends to raise the brigands, if you will. Oh, I designed it myself. This place has people rolling in the aisles. How do you get out of here? Well, there's plenty of doors. You wouldn't want me to spoil your fun now. Either you'll figure it out in the end, or you'll end it before you figure it out. What about the fortress? This fort is the brigand's palace. It has uh, been well constructed. And the minnow? Toro is the minotaur that guards this fortress. Elsa found him when he was just a calf. Now he's Kanim. Now he's katoed to her ever since. No, I'm sure that's a joke in there that I'm too numb to get. Carry on, people. He guarantees the brigands won't give Elsa any bullshit. Cause he's a cow. Wild minotaur, but still. Alright, well let's just mosey on over to one of these here doors. God damn it, York. Hey, hey, hey. It's not funny. It's not funny. Stop it. Stop laughing. So anyway, we're here to disenchant. 
So you know about the enchantment. Then perhaps you've come to help. Perhaps you are able to take the child from the band. Elsa doesn't know who she really is. That's part of the enchantment. When Elsa was left with some brigands ten years ago, all her memories were taken away from her. I borrowed a magic mirror from my friend to try to break the spell, but it only works when spells are cast directly at you. Eh. If you're going to be the big hero, I hope you brought it a spell potion or something. Good thing I knew I needed that in advance. Thank you, Dryad. You know about the enchantment? Okay, you've said that already. Shush. Hey, hey, we're having a nice conversation. Tell me about the Swordy Lordy. I don't even know what the fuck I'm going on about here. You must know about the Blade Braggart. He used to show off in the castle courtyard all the time. Elsa once asked if Rapier, if Rapier Ruler would teach her how to use the sword, and the sword board told her he would not waste his talent on females. Those words exactly. She came to me in tears. After all, she was only nine at the time. She can teach old Weapon Windbag a thing or two now. Her arm is true, and she's truly disarming. <laughs> I need that mirror, though. Got some plans of what I'd like to do with it. Ah, yes, the mirror with the leer, as Erasmus calls it. What was that, Fenris? It reflects a spell back on the caster of the spell. Now, where did I put that mirror? Was it on the desk in Elsa's office? Or else, the office on Elsa's desk? Been a great help. Go ahead and finish this conversation, Elf. Uh, he'd be surprised to see his little girl now. Thank you, you've been a great help. I'm just gonna go over here and uh, jerk on your chain a little bit. You feel a bit disoriented. Alright, Emmy, we've had enough. We've had enough. I ain't playing around with this shit no more. Fuck this maze. Fuck you for designing it. Fuck you for not being more helpful. You're a terrible wizard. I, on the other hand... There's an echo in here. Echo in here. Echo in here. I, on the other hand, am a bona fide wizard. Well, technically just a magic user, but you know me, I don't like technicalities. I'm not close enough. Kiss my ass. You finally made it through York's room. Into this rather cool looking place. Hey, hey honey, how's it going? Feeling good? The brigand leader wears a sword and it looks well used. Alright, I know what to do. Steady aim. The brigand leader taunts you with his stillness. You're sure that the first wrong move and you'll become an ex-hero. Oh, my dick. Elsa, my dear, there's a problem I fear. To our dismay, the spell's here to stay. For you did last kill your hero today. One thrust and that's it? The brigand leader is deadly with a sword. The magic spell that possesses her makes her an invincible warrior. That's handy. Well, I'm just gonna repeat whatever we just did, and we're gonna do it right this time. No looky-loos, we're just gonna do the business that needs to get done over here, okay? No more ass-jacking around in there, we're just gonna do it. It made it into York's room. You throw the dispel potion on the brigand leader. You can't imagine how good it feels to know who I am again, after all these years to remember my name is Elsa von Spielberg. It's a terrible accent. <laughs> I apologize. I used to wish I was not a brigand's child, but actually an enchanted princess. Now I know that I was really enchanted and don't have to be a brigand anymore. But you're still not a princess. Sorry to tell you. Thank you so much for freeing me. I've got to hurry home to father and get his guards to capture the rest of the brigands before they manage to escape with the treasure. It must be returned to its rightful owners. Yorick, Yorick, I'm me again. Sorry I took so long, I got lost. Well, your dad will be glad the spell's been repelled. Now we need to go before the brigands know or they'll spoil the show. Come on, we better make our getaway before they get in our way. Yorick, I can trust to, I can return to the castle with the amulet I wear, but I'm afraid you'll have to get out of here on your own. There are two healing potions on my desk that you may take with you. 
you should use the secret passage and escape while they're arguing over the treasure. If they find you in here, you'll be overwhelmed and killed. Thank you again, and good luck. I'll make sure you're richly rewarded for your bravery. If you decide to counter the curse, then mind the mirror over there. Then mind the mirror over mere minds. So tip the canoe and toodaloo. Elsa, if you do the honors, I'll honor you do. The brigands are trying to break into the room. Well, let's steal the mirror and get the hell out of here before we get fucked. Take the potions, because, you know, you always got to get as much loot as you can. All right. Well, we just managed to save the entire kingdom. Somehow it feels a little underwhelming, I got to be honest, but let's move on. We got some revenge to be getting. So this mirror reflects spells that are cast at you. And I know if I go back, she's going to want to turn me into a frog, because she's a meaty head. And we can't have any of that. We got to, like... I wonder if she'd like to be turned into a frog. You know what I'm saying? You know, a frog legs. She could, like, eat herself. That's gross. Don't think about that too much. You again? You really want to go back in there? You got a death wish? Maybe you're a bonehead. <laughs> ah, Sydney, it's like four in the morning. All right, Hunter Brown. Get on the ground. You again? Yes, I'm quite amazing. You furtively grasped the magic mirror. You know, I was just thinking about the last time I was here. You were quite rude. I just wanted to say hi. Powers that rule over regions soggy change this creature back into a froggy. The witch is hopping mad. And we have now beaten the game. We didn't get a perfect score, but I'm sure you won't mind. If you do, that's too bad. You're getting what you get. Damn it. There goes Baba Yaga. Now you've really made her sore. <laughs> and then you click, and you're at this non award ceremony here. Oh, well, you would be if the game loaded properly, but just pretend for now. We've become a hero with a. Uh, you know, none too shabby. We're missing like 18 points. What's 18 points, really? We probably just didn't talk to somebody. Talk to some slap ass who didn't deserve it. So, this is pretty much the end of the game. Yeah, I know, great. You can look around at the peoples and it tells you their names. They're all different uh, people who worked on the game. You can't look at Toro, poor bastard. But you can look at Corey Cole and Lori Ann Cole, who uh, helped design the, well, I don't know about help design, they actually designed the series. And I always thought this guy looked like, uh, oh, what's his name? Ken Williams. You don't know who that is, don't worry about it, it's not important. But I always thought he kind of looked like Ken Williams, and they like to put Ken Williams in Sierra games. So basically, to progress, you just have to wait until Yorick shows up to say more dumb shit. You've defeated the brigands and become a true hero with Spielberg. Now we do our little heroic pose here. And thus the hero from the east freed the man from the beast. Freed the man from form of beast. Okay. Save the brigands. Save the beauty from the brigands' band and force the ogress to flee the land. We are damn sexy heroes, let me tell you. Look at that. Uh, look at his majesty. We are, we are damn fabulous, let me tell you. The brigands' ban has been dispersed. Their treasure has been reimbursed. I'm gonna slit my wrists. I'm not really. And so, with the katas and a doula do, you bid the valley a fond adieu. There's no music here either. I'm probably gonna put some music over it when I'm editing the video, just so it won't be awkward silence, but. Anyway, 
Congratulations, you've completed Quest for Glory 1, so you want to be a hero. Thank you for purchasing, please buy more of our games. If you've not already done so, we encourage you to play Quest for Glory 1 again with other character classes, many of the puzzles of different or alternate solutions. In the meantime, you're already a winner. Please insert your DSP in your ass! I want to try to save my character again. So, if I can't get this to work, I'll do it off camera, but yeah. Uh, you can actually export your character and import it into the next game. So it was, that was pretty revolutionary at the time. And then it'll be time for the credits on my post-game review like I tend to do, you know. I'm predictable. I like predictability, you know. So that way you guys can just, like, go to sleep and wake up at any point in my LP and go over at. This is the point where I praise the music, even though I kind of didn't this game because it's kind of forgettable. So you claim to have created my save file, but I tried six years the last time, and you didn't do it properly. So I'm counting on you to do it right this time. No, I'll just deal with it. Thank you for playing Quest of Glory 1, so you want to be a hero, and congratulations again on winning. We'll see you soon in Quest of Glory 2, Trial by Fire. So this game, you can tell it's a really old game. Um, there's not a lot in the way of direction. The story is kind of eh. And I'll be perfectly honest with you guys, if you're watching at this point, if you're watching at this point, I've already gotten at least well into the second game, if not further, because I don't want to have you guys wait a long time for new episodes to come out. I just want to like boom, boom, boom and have them come out for you, but this game is nowhere near as good as later games in the series. Like I said, 4 was where I started and that is, in my opinion, the best game. But I felt like you guys really needed to see what came before it to really appreciate everything in the fourth and fifth game. Because there's a lot of callbacks, a lot of references to things that happened before. And you know what? They are pretty fun games. They're cheesy in that Sierra way. They have some basic role-playing game elements. And, you know, they were uh, a big part of uh, my uh, childhood as a gamer. So, yeah. I have a lot of nice things to say about them. They're not perfect, and this game is kind of lacking in a lot of the details. Second game is quite a bit better. Uh, anywho, um, I uh, had fun making this video, a bit more fun than I thought, and I finally got my audio set up so it doesn't sound like complete horse ass. It doesn't sound good either, but it doesn't sound terrible, and that's what I shoot for, not terrible. Anyway, guys, I hope you will join me in the next chapter of this little series. We're going to go through all five games. All five. And I hope I will see you in the next video. Take care of yourselves, guys.